Hey YouTube, face to face here and wanted to do a tutorial on how to overclock my or a GTX 780 Lightning. I had a user ping me a couple weeks ago and ask me how I overclocked my card and so this is uh, essentially in response to that. So starting things off, um, I use two pieces of software to start. Uh, when it comes to overclocking. Obviously the first one is MSI Afterburner. That is our overclocking utility. This is what we're going to use in order to boost our core clock speed and the memory clock speed of our video card. Um, I tend to lean towards MSI Afterburner all the time just because it does work with AMD and NVIDIA based graphics cards and it has the most, uh, it works with the most voltage controllers out there as well so raising core voltage um, is uh, more likely with this program versus any other. Um, so I use MSI Afterburner for the overclocking portion and for testing stability I use Unigen Heaven Benchmark. Um, you may be, some of you may be more familiar with the, uh, the Unigen Valley Benchmark. Um, however, I don't use that one typically because it's not as stressful as the Heaven um, Benchmark and uh, I'm able to uncover uh, more unstable overclocks using the Heaven Benchmark uh, versus the Valley Benchmark. So. Uh, really quick, some things about the Lightning that you may see or notice um, in this tutorial is that the Lightning um, has some, some things going for it when it comes to overclocking. Um, first of all, when you go through your MSI Afterburner settings portion in the general section, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is unlock the voltage control and unlock the voltage monitoring. Um, and then make sure you go to the um, extended MSI drop down selection here and make sure that that's selected. Go hit OK. and um, I already have that selected, so I don't need to restart it. But um, and so the, what that does is that unlocks your core voltage, so I can go all the way up to 100 millivolts or plus 100 millivolts, and that enables me to also uh, um, adjust my memory voltage if needed and auxiliary voltage. Um, however, these are not two options you're going to be doing trying to find a stable overclock for gaming. Um, if you're trying to push your card to limit to to, to beat your buddy's 3D Mark score or trying to you know, rank up on the Catzilla benchmark, whatever it may be, um, maybe you can mess with this. Really, realistically, the memory voltage, I'm only going to be able to get 100 millivolts, and, and with the crap memory that I have on my card, um, I've already tried it, and it, it honestly doesn't do anything. So if you have better memory, maybe some SK Hynix or some some Samsung memory, you may be able to go a little bit further with that. I unfortunately have the uh, Elpida memory, and it's terrible. So, going back to MSI Afterburner, um, one more thing I want to bring up before we jump on that is the Riva Tuna Statistics software. Um, I do use this program as it's included with MSI Afterburner um, when you install it. It essentially uh, gives you the ability to um, display an on-screen display while you're in a program. It's something I use to monitor my video card while I'm overclocking, or even while I'm gaming, I can kind of check my temperatures, I can check my power limit, GPO usage, whatever it may be. It's a wealth of information. I would certainly recommend using it if you're using Afterburner. Um, again, if you all, if anybody wants a more in-depth look at MSI Afterburner, I can certainly provide a video on that. Just let me know if you want to see one, and I can uh, give you some more information on how MSI Afterburner works in detail. So, um, if you're watching this video, I hope that you already know how to use it and you're comfortable using it. So. Let's go ahead and get started with overclocking. Um, so, in general, with MSI, with the MSI GTX Lightning, the card um, comes with the stock BIOS and then an LN2 BIOS on the second switch. I replaced the LN2 BIOS with the Skynet BIOS, which is found on OCN um, Overclock.net. It is uh, a modded BIOS which removes boost and it allows you to adjust your power limit beyond the 109 limit. And um, that's really what it does in a nutshell. Um, if you want to increase your core voltage beyond plus 100 megahertz, you have to use a special tool, or a special version of MSI Afterburner uh, with the Ribby tool. Um, again, that can be information for another video. Right now, I wanted to stick with the stock BIOS to show you that I could obtain um, decent clock speeds with just using the stock BIOS and the stocks, um, and just adding plus 100 millivolts. So. What I do is when I run Heaven Benchmark, is I usually run every setting I can completely maxed out. 
to stress my card out as much as I can. However, I do not run it in full screen initially. I'll run it at 720p. This is a 1440p display, so I can run it in a windowed portion, and I can overclock real time. So while I'm running my uh, the Heaven benchmark, I'm going to be actually overclocking while I'm running it. So I'm, I'm going to be overclocking it in real time. Now that is um, something that is, is I've, I've been doing for kind of a, a while now. The, the old school way of overclocking was to raise your core clocks and uh, run, you know loop 3D Mark one or two times. It, 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 honestly, it takes way too long. I'm not that patient. Um, this is just how I do it. Obviously, there are some some pieces of software and some other things that I do on top of this to truly test for stability. But this is how I start. So if you have an MSI, well before we jump back into this, sorry I'm all over the place, let's take a quick look at the on-screen display. So right now we're displaying the, um, the frames per second we're getting right now, the GPU power limit, right now we're using 70% of the 250 watt TDP power limit and this is the GPU temperature, the GPU usage, the current voltage, which is 1.1 volts, and then the current clock speed. Below that we have the memory temperature, the memory double data rate, um, um, double data rate transfer speeds, and the current memory VRAM usage, I'm sorry, PCB temperature, VRM temperature, CPU temps, physical memory, or sorry, system memory, one thing to keep in mind, the VRM, PCB, and memory temperatures are exclusive to the MSI 780 Lightning card or Lightning versions of, um, of, uh, M of these MSI cards. Uh, there are a handful of uh, GK110 cards that do offer VRM monitoring, but I don't think any other brand offers memory or PCB monitoring. Um, so this is what I do. I monitor these in real time while I'm overclocking. So if you have an MSI Lightning card, my recommendation to you, as long as you're not um, sitting in an ambient of 30C or more, you should be fine just adding um, plus 100 millivolts. I say that because um, NVIDIA's green light program allows you um, the max voltage of 1.2 volts. That's as high as you can go with any card um, that's that's within the program, so pretty much any Maxwell or Kepler-based video card, um, 1.2 is going to be the max you're going to be able to go. Kepler specifically, I'm not 100% sure about Maxwell, but so 1.2 is the highest you're going to be able to go. That's kind of considered safe uh, per Nvin NVIDIA, and with the throttling, with GPU Boost 2.0 and the throttling measures that have come into consideration with that, I mean, it's really hard to damage your video card. However, there's always that person that will, and um, again, I'm not responsible if you're that person. If you can um, just follow some quick guidelines, you will be perfectly fine. First thing, keep in consideration, the temperature threshold for a GTX 780 is 80 to 81 C. Once you hit those numbers, you're going to start to throttle. Once you start to throttle, your core clocks will come down, essentially negating the purpose of overclocking in the first place. So you need to keep your temperatures below 8081C. And with the lightning, if your ambient is, is, is decent, currently my ambients are on 25C, I can keep that below 8081C on an air cool card at around 75-80% fan speed. Keep in mind my card is not air cooled currently, it's using a hybrid all-in-one uh, setup with the NZXT, NZXT bracket but um, keeping it cooled, <coughs> excuse me, keeping it under that 8081 number should be very possible with an aggressive uh, fan sp fixed fan speed or even using a custom fan profile using MSI Afterburner. Um, and then also keep in mind the max temperature threshold of a GTX 780 is 95 C. If you hit 95 C or more, your card will turn off, protecting it from further damage. If your car is even close to hitting 95C, I would recommend you not overclocking it in the first place. So again, let's keep those temperatures below 8081C, and you should be fine. Even if you're adding the plus 100 millivolts 
or you're adding plus 37 or plus 70 something like similar cars will allow you if you're at 1.2 volts you're perfectly fine so what are we, I'm gonna do to overclock my lightning is I'm gonna take my millivolts and plus them to 100 gonna go straight to that 1.2 number so if I hit apply it takes it from 1.1 to 1.2 I increase my power limit to 109, giving me a little bit more TDP to draw on. And GTX 780s have a TDP of 250 watts. If you raise it to 109, you're getting about essentially 9% on top of that. So I think it's around 270 or so watts you're able to draw. Um, so go ahead and max both of those out. And down to our core clock. If you don't know, uh, NVIDIA uses boost bins. And those boost bins are of 13 megahertz a piece. So if I add only, uh, if I add, let's say 10, plus 10 megahertz, or plus 10, I'll hit apply, and you'll notice nothing changes. I need to go to 13, hit apply, and you'll notice it changes to 1137. And then if I want to go up the next boost bin, I'll do 26. Hit apply and it goes to 1150 as you can see right there so it works in 13 inc 13 megahertz boost bins and um, that's the way you overclock in video cards um, that use GPU boost and as far as the memory clock is concerned or memory in making uh, adjustments to your memory you can adjust this to whatever you'd like and you're gonna see changes here on your um, on your data rate for your memory so you can um, <coughs> excuse me you can uh, in increase this. There's, there are no boost pins with this. You can just increase this however you see fit. So I know with this specific, specific card, I can do um, 3312 in the double data rate um, on this card. So an effective um, transfer rate of around, what is it, uh, 6624 my math is terribly wrong so it's um, it's a, it's kind of a weak overclock as far as memory is concerned um, and having that weak overclock actually um, keeps me from scaling well when I hit beyond 1300 megahertz I notice that my uh, my scaling beyond 1300 megahertz um, is not very good because my memory clock is not scaling I can't increase my memory um, clock with it so it's it's scaling is leaves leaves a lot to be desired um, with this card because I have the Elpidon memory and so it just doesn't overclock very well. So back to the core clock. So what I'll do is I'll keep uh, just increasing uh, 13 megahertz increments at a time. So let's just see, let's go up to uh, like one, let's go to like 130. Hit apply. And now I'm up to 1241 megahertz. So I will say that if you have a GTX 780 Lightning from all the forums that I've been in and been a part of and read, most people with plus 100 millivolts can hit beyond 1200 megahertz or at 1200 megahertz. It's very common for card, the Lightning cards to hit 1200 megahertz or more. These chips are binned to my knowledge, so you're, uh, of course, everybody plays a silicon lottery, so it's not guaranteed, obviously, but you should be getting close to that 1200 megahertz mark just with that plus 100 millivolts, so. Which is, you know, a pretty huge increase over the reference 780s, which most of them barely boost to a gigahertz um, out of the box. So, I mean, you're looking at a pretty strong overclock. I had a reference 780 before this card, and its max overclock with all the voltage and everything applied stable was 1150 which is this card does it without even trying so um, it, it, this card is extremely impressive 780 in comparison to a reference card um, I have tested this card for my stable gaming overclocks with this voltage I can reach 1306 megahertz stable in games which to me is great no, no problems there um, I'm happy with it it gives me performance um, equal to uh, a 970, uh, 980, 80 even in some games, um, but it's uh, it's it's impressive. It's it brings me up to it's really realistically the 780 Ti performance, 
I say 980, but in, in, in actuality, there are uh, the a 980 can overclock and, and blow the doors off this card. So I did run a couple of tests. Shadow of Mordor. This card actually keeps up with the stock 980 at that megahertz. So it's 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 impressive in that way. So um, with the memory overclock, like I, again, I know what this card can do. We just increase it. Um, you know, I usually increase this when I'm trying to find my stable clock. I'll increase it um, usually 25 megahertz at a time to see if I can find stability. So when you're doing your memory clock, just increase it 25 megahertz at a time. Wait a minute. See if you see any artifacts on the screen. If you're overclocking the memory, you'll see some pixelation, more like checkered pixelation showing up. Sometimes some, uh, some different colors as well will uh, pop in and out. That's usually an indication that your memory clock is too high. So at that point, you want to drop it down a little bit more. Now, when you're overclocking your core, what you'll normally see is some lines, maybe some triangles, some little black slits here and there. Um, that usually is an indication that your core clock is either too high or you need to give it some more voltage. In this case, we're tapped out on voltage, so we would just drop down the core clock. Um, so that's what I would do with the core, when I'm increasing my core clock. I'll let this heaven loop run for about a minute. If I don't see artifacts, I'll do another 1300, 13 megahertz boost bin. I'll wait another minute, don't see an artifacts, I'll keep doing it until I start seeing artifacts or the driver stops responding or the computer restarts, whatever it may be. Um, usually in this case with this card, the driver just stops responding um, if the overclock is unstable. So I kind of know where I left off and kind of start where I left off and, uh, and find it from there. So um, after I, I loop, after I find my stable clock with heaven, what I'll do is I'll run it at full resolution. 1440p in this case, I'll loop it for five times. If it's stable, I'll I'll go ahead and run the newest version of 3D Mark. I'll loop that three times. If that's stable, I'll fire up Crisis 3 and or Metro Last Light and play the games for about 30 minutes. If I'm stable 30 minutes on, on Crisis 3 or Metro Last Light, I'm usually stable. So Obviously, if you don't play those games, you don't own those games, you might want to look in your in your Steam inventory or wherever you're playing and uh, try to find your most graphically intensive game and use that as a, as, as a stability test as well. I can't say you can just use Heaven or 3D Mark because they're not tried and true. They're not the, the, the best way to find you know your, your stable overclocks. You just have to run a, a, just a, a number of, of programs or games to really find it. Sometimes you'll find it after a while. Sometimes it may take an hour or two of playing a game, and then you'll you'll find some instability. You might see an artifact or two. Um, I don't recommend you using Furmark or Combus or anything like that. They're just way too stressful on your hardware. They actually can damage your hardware as well. Um, I, I kind of stay away from those, and they are typically do a terrible job of finding stability as well. So I like to stick with this method. It takes a little, it's a lot less time versus the old school 3D mark method, but it's still going to take some time to find stability. Um, and so I think that's pretty much it when it comes to overclocking this card. Again, you can use this tutorial for other cards, uh, other cards in the Kepler series, and even the Maxwell based cards. Um, with the GPU Boost 1.0, 2.0, it really makes overclocking a lot safer and easier. If your card gets too hot, it's going to throttle. It's going to turn off. It's going to protect you from damaging your card. But make sure you, you do your research. You know when your, cars, your card starts to thermally throttle. You know what a safe temperature is for your card. And try to stay below that. In this case, we know that GK110 780s at 8081C, they thermally throttle. Stay below it. The 780 Ti thermally throttles 8384C, stay below it. Maxwell cards, you'll have to do your research on those to find out what they thermally throttle at, but just keep that in mind. Um, if anybody wants uh, to see a little more in depth on MSI Afterburner, wants to learn a little more about it, has any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment. I can certainly do another video on that. If anybody has any questions about how I overclock or any questions on how to overclock, feel free to leave a comment as well and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye.